thank, thank you. All right, uh, Mike Arnold, John Eddy, two guys with four first names. Uh, how are you fellas doing today? That's great. You know, it's so funny. I never, I never put the Mike Arnold as the two first names. I had never heard that in my entire life. I love that, it. Now that that's great. That. Now, but now it's true. Like I got two first names. You got to I look at digging it. I'm stealing that. Feel free to use it, fellas. Hey, let's talk about Agent Elvis coming to Netflix March seventeenth at midnight. Uh, that's going to be this Friday. Uh, it says tells me here it's uh, created by uh, you, John, and Priscilla Presley. Can you tell me a little bit how you got Priscilla involved in this project? Yeah, I, well, I, I'm a musician and a songwriter. That was my first job. And I, and back in the early 2000s, I did two tours with Lisa Marie when she had released two records. I was open. I was her opening act, and I got to meet Lisa and Priscilla and became friends with them. And so it was every time I would go onto the West Coast, Priscilla and I would go out to dinner. And she's a very cool, creative person. And one night over dinner, I had I'd had this. This was 2012 when I first pitched it to her, and I'd had this idea, you know, inspired by the famous photo of Elvis and Nixon, where Elvis is offering his services as a DE agent, narc, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and I just and I just pitched it as an animated show because being a huge Elvis fan, I, and anytime there had been a movie or TV series about Elvis as good as whoever the actor was, I was a big fan of Kurt Russell when he did Elvis and, and all the way up to Austin in the Baz movie, it, as, as great a job as they do acting, I never got past the point that they didn't look like Elvis because Elvis was singularly such a good looking dude, especially the time period we have him at in our show. And so I just thought maybe animation was the way to go and it just opened it up to a whole crazy world that we came up with for Agent Elvis. But that was that was the germ of it. I pitched her that and and I was surprised at how receptive she was to it. The idea that it would be adult animation. I I said, I said, imagine it's directed by Quentin Tarantino. I know she's friends with Quentin. And I was like, imagine it's, you know, it's got violent sex, drugs, everything the time period had. And she's just a very creative person. She's an actress and she's done her own movies and stuff. So she was very open to it. Um, and you said that uh, 2012, you first pitched this. So did this uh, this idea predates the recent uh, Austin Butler Elvis movie? Did that help? Did that movie help uh, generate a little interest, a little more interest in this project? Well, I, it was we we loved we knew about the movie and we felt like it was just bringing more eyeballs, and more interest in Elvis, which could only help our show. And, you know, later down the line, we, we, Baz Lerman learned about it. We asked him to do a voice. He did a voice for us on the show. He was really excited, loved the project. So we just felt like it, it all went together very nicely. And obviously what we were doing was very different than the wonderful movie he created. Yeah. Cause this is a, this is a fictional Elvis. This is an alternate reality Elvis. And, um, but in a sense, it's all part of the same thing, which is bringing Elvis to life for a younger generation. Yeah, it's, it's been a long journey getting it made. And there was always, it was funny because, you know, it, again, you know, Priscilla's friends with Baz. So we were always aware of each other's projects and, you know, from the very beginning. And I think because he started his in like 2014 and that's when we sold it to Sony Animation. And we would hear like, oh, you know, we can or can't use that song. Baz has that song on hold. Like there was a lot of that going on, but it was, but it was, you know, very friendly and and it was kind of like what who would what would come out first, and it just worked out that that you know, and it it definitely helped us. You know, the 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 amazing success and how cool Baz's movie is. It it you know, I, I just think Elvis is in the zeitgeist, and the projects that are coming out are just cool projects and not just the same thing over and over again. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you've got uh, math. We've got Matthew McConaughey starring as Elvis. You mentioned Laz Berman does a voice. Um, uh, uh, costume designer John Veritas does all the looks for Elvis and a murderer's row of voice talent involved with this project. What would you say is the biggest win going for, going into this when you started? It was certainly once we got into production, to, we still pinch ourselves over the cast that we got together for an animated show. And in our humble opinion, we'd never seen, and never has there been a cast like this for an animated television show. And it all started with being lucky enough to get Matthew. Um, we wanted somebody uh, who could kind of bring that, the coolness that Elvis was all about to life. And Matthew has this wonderful effortless swagger that he brought to the voice of Elvis and really made it his own. 
And, you know, from there at every turn, it was really was a swing for the fences. You know, we did not think we'd get Don Cheadle after Matthew. We got, oh, let's give it a shot. And we mm-hmm. did. And then Caitlin and then Nisi and Johnny Knoxville and on down the line. And um, we just could not be more fortunate. And these people understood they're such great actors and actresses. But on top of that, they understood the comedy. They're very funny in their own way. All of the people on our cast do a lot of comedy. And they understood the timing. They So they brought everything to life in a way that we really couldn't have anticipated and just elevated the whole project altogether. So I would say the, the cast was really the biggest thing we had moving forward once it all came together. Yeah, I think I think the undeniable combination of Matthew McConaughey's cool with the cool of Elvis Presley and the participation of Priscilla, knowing that we had her support and the support of, you know, you know, the world of Elvis Presley doing this show. I think, and I think once Matthew came on board, that got all the other A-list talent going like, wow, this is not just some silly project. This is a cool project. And we had a coked up monkey uh, with a shotgun. So that yeah, coked up monkey with the shotgun. <laughs> right. I love, I love big talent. I role. love right, right. I love how you brought uh that kind of legend of scatter in there into the story. And I, I really should have, I'm kind of burying the lead, but I love this show. I love the story that you guys created. Uh, my only complaint is that I've watched all 10 episodes already and I don't have any more to watch. I got to wait for uh, the <laughs> announcement of season two. Any word on that yet? Oh, we're, we're obviously very hopeful, um, but we're, we're just going to come out and then that decision will be made. I imagine sometime soon thereafter. Yeah, we we well, always our our best intention and our and our vision for the show is to definitely take it past places people have seen Elvis. We'd love to see Elvis go into the eighties and the nineties. It's like you know we we it's it follows that timeline and that and that was part of the pitch to Priscilla that she liked you know leaning into the fact that maybe Elvis is alive out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got a um, couple of my favorite gags. You've got Ben. Franklin electrifying some genitalia, uh, <laughs> Nixon sex ideas, Elvis <laughs> Elvis Canil Canil Elvis, not easy for me to say. Autothistic nihilist. Uh, what <laughs> was what is your guys's uh, favorite gag in this show, or, or do you have one that didn't make it into the show? Oh well, well for me it was because I think it did a good job of setting the tempo. There's uh, in setting the tone of the show. Uh, in the pilot, when he's in, when Elvis is interrogating the bad guy tied to the chair, and he says, "I promise you, Scatter's going to pull that trigger." And the head blows up right there, um, because Scatter misinterpreted what he was saying. It, it's a great moment because so early on in the show, I, I think we're telling the audience, you know, in these moments where it's going to get intense, it's going to go off the rails really quickly, and it's going to go off the rails in a way that's uh, character specific and that you buy into. And uh, there are a lot of fun moments in this show, but uh, that was one early on, I think, that really captured what we were trying to do. Yeah, I'd have to say, um, we told this story a couple of times today, but um, Kieran Culkin, when he came down to his voice thing, I'm a big Succession fan. So like when we got, when Kieran agreed to do the part in the finale, I was like, I was kind of fanboying on him. And I was like, dude, so thank you so much for doing this show. And he was like, he was like, dude, you have Elvis Presley fighting Robert Goulet in a volcano on jetpacks. Why wouldn't I do this show? So it was like, <laughs> I was just, like he goes, he goes, I pick my projects by what I want to see. I want to see Elvis Presley fighting Robert Goulet in a volcano on jetpacks. So I, so to my, what Mike said, I think every episode has something that makes me go like, damn, I can't believe we got to do that. You know, it's just, it's just. It's a, it's a, it's a fun ride for sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, Mike, the, well, so I'm watching this show, episodes one and two, and it kind of reminds me of a couple other shows, that, like, you know, in tone and and the comedy, right? Uh, Mike, I know you co-wrote for a little upstart called Archer, and the show really put me in the frame of mind of uh, the Venture Brothers. Yes. Uh, with, you know, with famous people more instead of comic comic book analogs. And uh, so I did a little research. I see that Titmouse did the animation. Uh, you met Michael Center Nicholas is the thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. As the voice director, uh, Robert Valley did the uh, character design and his Timothy Leary looks a little bit like Rusty Venture to me. Is uh-huh. there any obvious or any any connection to the venture brothers or was it inspired at all by the venture brothers 
I, I'm certainly a Venture Brothers fan. Um, I, it, it's not one that really you're the first person to ever bring that up. So I hadn't really thought about like that comparison. But one thing that the Venture Brothers and Archer in this show, I think there's a common thread between the two is the tempo we were trying to keep with every episode. Um, the tempo of the dialogue, the pacing of the action. And certainly among all these shows, there's a certain irreverence that we embraced and tried to take out for a spin. But uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of connective tissue between all of those. And I think it's just in part that a lot of the same people are in these worlds because this is what we love to do. And um, whether it's through the you know directing or the animation company or the writing, uh, you, you tend to run across a lot of the same people because it's just, this is the tone, the kind of show they like to be a part of. So we were lucky enough to grab a lot of great writers that I know from other shows that are in this realm who did a wonderful job. Because again, like the actors, they understood the comedy. They understood what we were trying to do and the stories we were trying to tell. And also for the look of the show, I mean, it, the first, you know, the first character designs we saw were from Robert Valley. And we said, look, no more. This is our, this is what we want the show to look like. And Fletcher Moulis, who did, uh, who directed Intergalactic, you know, he was very instrumental in the beginning, you know, setting up what the world would look like. We like as as much as you, you you mentioned the animation, like I said, we we would look at a lot of films from the 60s and 70s to get the graininess, like again, going to the Quentin Tarantino, the Grindhouse, the This Is Elvis documentary, where we do the split screens and and stuff like that. So we 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 really pulled from a lot of different besides the great world event adult animation that we pulled from. I think I think we also brought a lot of things from other, you know, um, medium too. Mm -hmm. Guys, I think I got uh, time for just one more real quick question here. When I was a, a young lad, I used to have to get up real early on Saturday mornings to beat my brother to the good spot on the to the good spot on the couch. Uh, but I'd have to get up even earlier than that to uh, beat my parents into the kitchen to pour myself a big bowl of sugary goodness. So uh, Mike and John, I'd like to know what was your favorite bowl of Saturday morning cereal and what cartoons did you watch? Oh man, that's a great question. Uh, for me, if we had it, it was Fruit Loops, but my parents didn't love the fact I was eating Fruit Loops. So I unfortunately went down to Raisin Bran and I was like, <laughs> you know, Saturday morning, my generation, my brothers and I, I was the youngest of three were watching. You remember that murderer's row of Speed Racer, George of the Jungle, all of those oh, yeah. back to back. Uh, we would watch all of those and uh, then Bugs Bunny, of course, and uh, it's all the Saturday morning classics. I was glued to all of them. My favorite of all, all of them was certainly Speed Racer, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Well, and for me, I'm going to show my age a little bit, uh, but it actually ties into Agent Elvis and the fact that there had never been an Elvis cartoon. I liked when they had the Beatles Saturday morning cartoon and then they had... <laughs> And then they had the Jackson Five. So I was, again, I was a musician, so I like the Jackson Five Saturday morning cartoon. I like the Archies, like so, so that era. But then I have to go with Wacky Races too. I like Wacky Races. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be Pit Stop and uh, Dick Dastardly and Muttley. So what was your cereal, John? I want to know what your cereal was. I, you know what? I, mean, I swear to God, you're gonna hate it because, but it's what my dad ate, and it was Total. It wasn't like a kid's. Thing. Oh no, Total's good. It was like That's Total. Good. That's all right. Like, Total with a shit ton of sugar on it, but it was still total. Yeah. <laughs> so basically making my own, like, you know, sh sugary crunchy, but it was total. Right. A very mature approach to watching cartoons uh, <laughs> Saturday morning. Hey, fellas, I don't want to take up too much more time. Thank you so much, Agent Elvis, okay. coming to Netflix March 17th at midnight. Do me a favor, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you on the other side. You too, Thank brother. You. Thank you.